that will help help me forget not to to record. So we're going to go look at dictionaries, and uh, let me grab get uh, this PowerPoint. Thanks. And if you can start idle, kind of a weird statement. Start idle anyway. Can everyone see my screen? So let's try this. Let's um, let's say that uh, we're we're simulating um, Survivor, and um, we're going to make a list of names: A Alice, Beth, Cecil, Dee Dee, and Earl. So, how do we know that this is a list? Yes, because of the square brackets. If it was uh, parentheses, what would it be? So parentheses are tuples, square brackets are lists, and of course, uh, single or double quotes are strings. <clears throat> Those are our sequences. And this is a sequence, which is a list of strings. And then we're going to make um, a list of numbers. And then we're going to say numbers, names, dot index, Cecil. And let's see. What do you get when you put numbers names dot index Cecil? Get three one five eight or five zero, depending on how you typed it in. And so we get this value here. Notice that C cell is parallel to that. Um, did we do the state? Did, was program two the states program? No, that's the one's coming up. I think, or maybe states was the last one. If you do the states program, this look, should look fairly similar. What we have here is we have two parallel lists. And so let's take a look at this. Put names dot index Cecil. It's 
So what does this index operation do? Yeah, find the index number of Cecil. What's the index number of Alice? Zero. What about Beth? And therefore, still is two. Does, does that make sense what the index function did? And then if I look at uh, numbers, square brace two, notice I get 3158. So this is something that happens in Python a lot is you have multiple things happening all in one line. This part here is getting the index of Cecil, then passing that index to numbers, and then we get 3158. Does it make sense how that all kind of piles together? Okay, so so very common way of storing basically a table of information. This would be a table with two columns if you think about it, and you know you can use the index to get uh, um, to to uh, to find a parallel element. Well, another way of doing this is using a dictionary, and here we're going to make a phone book that has a pair uh, a collection of key value pairs. And in this case, this phone book variable is storing what we call a dictionary. And the way you know it's a dictionary is it has curly braces and it has what we had call key value pairs. In this case, Alice is the key and the value is 2341. Beth is a key, 9102 is a value. Cecil is a key, 3258 is a value. And the key is on the left and the value is on the right of these colons. So how many elements are in this dictionary? Three, three key value pairs. Each pair of keys and values is one element. 
notice there's two commas here. So one element here, two element here, three element there. So the key value it, together is the element in a dictionary. In fact, you can kind of demonstrate this by doing this. Say items is the list with two tuples in it, and one tuple is name Gumby, and the other one is age 42. And then you can apply the dict ICT function, which is basically just like a, we had, there's conversion functions for lists, there's conversion functions for tuples. Um, this is saying take this list of pairs and turn it into a dictionary and then show D and it'll actually turn that into a dictionary. And let me know when that works. Cool. So now, if we had a list, for example, so I've still got names here. If I want to get an element of names, for example, I have to put in an index number and it gives me names. With a dictionary, on the other hand, D is equal to, and I'm just going to go ahead and make this. Um, or to make a dictionary normally from scratch, you just have to type it out with uh, curly braces. You know, if I said D1, it actually wouldn't be able to figure out what that is. With a dictionary, indexes don't work. You have to use a key. So if I put name, it can be, if you put age, 42. So 
the key is what is actually used in places of an index between the square braces. So give that a try. And see if that works. And then try this one. We'll make another dictionary very similar to this one. But we we'll use the dictionary function and we'll, this is called using keyword arguments. We're going to learn with functions what keyword arguments are later in more detail. But we're saying age equals 32. And when you try that, you should get age. You'll get a dictionary built out of these these key value pairs. So age became the key and 32 became the value. So try that one too. And then try the same sort of thing with uh, the other dictionary. And it works the same way. The big key here is with um, um, with uh, dictionaries, you don't use index numbers. You use key values. Does that make sense? And here, there's there's some basic operators with uh, dictionaries. Len returns the number of items. So if I were to take, um, you know, if you said Len of D, you know, this dictionary here, we can see there's two elements in there. We should get back two. Yep. If you say D of some key value, which we did, you know, like age, get uh, whatever the value is associated with that key. If you, um, you can also change a value. So if I want to change age, I could say D of age is equal to 43. And if I show D, you could see that I had changed the value. And if I want to delete a key, I could delete um, name, for example. It's delete D. Now that key value pair has been removed. And then if I say um, name in D, this is false because I just deleted it. It does make sense. So you got basically how many things are there? Um, pull something out of it, change a value, delete a value, and then check to see if a particular value is in the list. Um, <clears throat> dictionary keys don't have to be integers. 
they can be any immutable type. So they can be floating point numbers, strings, tuples, um, integers, you know, whatever you want can be a key. Um, if the key does not exist, a new item will be created. So try this, say X equals an empty list, and then try to say X 42 equals food bar and tell me what happens. Yeah, you get index out of range because if you, you know, this list, how many items are in X? How many elements? And if you want, you know, you can do the length of um, X. So if I go here and I say X is equal to an empty list, len of X, I get zero. So I can't get the 42nd element out of a zero element list. So, but with a dictionary, make an empty, so make an X empty dictionary with X and then say X of 42 equals foobar and then look at X, what do you get? And so what you get, the nice thing is, is with a list, you have to have all the element, you have to have a space to modify something. With a dictionary, it will just add that key value pair dynamically to it. So let's say that you were doing some data collection and, you know, you could have, you know, you're collecting data on um, some equipment to see if it, it was functional or not. Well, you could store the words functional or non-functional based on its uh, serial number. But the problem, you know, even if there's a numeric serial number, you know, no letters or number or anything, the, the problem would be that, um, um, you know, you, if the possible value for that serial number could be like between one and 10 digits, you know, of nines, then, um, you would have to have a very large list preloaded with not with empty spaces to uh, to use that to be ready to load values in with a dictionary. It's actually much more efficient, faster to find things, and it takes up less space in memory. So there are times when it makes sense to use a dictionary, i.e. you don't know what the key value ranges are going to be. And uh, they and you're you know, the. The, and then other times when it makes sense to use a list. So uh, 
the key is to really kind of understand how these different data structures work and then know and then pick the right one for the situation. And part of it is, hey, if it seems like, you know, you have to do something ridiculous like initialize, you know, 10,000 values or something, you're probably thinking you probably should be start thinking in terms of a dictionary rather than a list. Does that kind of make sense? So let's look, try this one. Well, let's make a dictionary, a phone book dictionary with Beth, Alice, and Ce Cecil with some numbers. You may, I, you may already have that in memory. If not, type in this, dic this phone book. And then we're going to say Cecil's phone number is percent Cecil S. And in this case, notice the parentheses. Notice that this is a percent S, and this parenthesis with Cecil in it is actually between the percent and the S. And then we're going to use, say, and then, you know, feed this phone book into this format string. And then see what you get. So what you should get is Cecil's phone number is 3158. If you put a key between the percent and the S, what it will do is it will go into, and then you pass in a phone book. It will actually pull out of the phone book the value. So that 3158 here is what gets placed in there. So you can see this can be kind of useful. You can have a string, which is a format, and then you can have a dictionary with the possible values, and then you can put in what you, what you want to grab out of that phone book. Does that kind of make sense? And then um, here's an example of actually where you could use it to uh, fill in some HTML. I'm not going to ask you to type this one in. It's kind of long, but I'll kind of talk through it. So here we have a template. And um, by the way, if you put three single quotes like this, what it says is ignore all formatting characters so we don't have to worry about slashes and things like that. Um, it will just interpret this exactly as typed. So that's three single quotes or three double quotes before and after a string. And so here we have what's basically HTML. This is a um, how your web, web page looks. And so we have the head block here and then the body block. And inside of here, the title. And notice that the title is passed in, is in this template as percent title S. So that right there. Um, this part right here is actually a format specifier. And then down here, we have the same format specifier as this heading one, and then the same format spec, and then another format specifier with text in the paragraph. And then if you were to take data, a dictionary that has, uh, has title and text, notice this title is going to go up here. It's going to go into here. And then this text is going to go into here. And if you were to print the, if you print this out, 
different template percent data. It says, hey, take this data and throw it into this template. You would actually get my homepage. Can you erase this? You would see that um, you would get title that goes in there, which then goes in here, my home page. And then text is going to go in here, which shows up. Right there. Welcome to my home page. Does that make sense? If any of you have ever worked with an MVC website, that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, you have a temple, which is where you have you know, your HTML with some space holders, and then you have some data and you dump it into the template, and then that gets sent back to response for a web page. And there's a bunch of uh, methods associated with dictionaries, just like with uh, strings and other sequences. Uh, create an empty dictionary and then say D name equals Gumby and you should and then say D age equals 42 and then take a look at D. You should get age 42 name Gumby. So give that a shot and see what you get. And then what I want you to do is. Um, So I'm going to do that here. D is equal to an empty dictionary. D name is equal to Gumby. D age is equal to 42. And I get that. And then do D dot clear. And you'll see that that will actually remove your dictionary. So go ahead and do that. Let me know when that works.
Okay. And then uh, there's a copy function. I think we can do this with the same dictionary we have rather than switching back and forth. Um, I'm going to um, rerun these steps. If you hit enter, put your cursor on things and then um, hit them again. So we got, actually, we kind of need to do it this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So if you say X is equal to, So you get X and then say Y equals X dot copy and then show Y. Then say Y dot username is equal to MLH and then Y dot remove bar. So I'm going to say why. So now I'm working with the copy. And then why machines. So why machines is going to retrieve this list here. And then what we're going to do is. Let me see if I can get some more room. So we got this reference to this list here with Y dot machines, and then we're going to do the dot remove and we're going to remove bar. And then we're going to look at why. <clears throat> so did removing bar and changing username to MLH work with why? Were we able did is a pretty, what happened to why, it's kind of what we told it to do, right? Can you all hear me? Okay. So now take a look at X though. What happened to X? Yeah, X is missing the bar. We removed bar from Y though. Why did it come off of X? And it could be that, well, if we remove both of these are the same when we copied, but if you notice when we changed username, 
Y's username changed, but X's did not. But when we removed bar from the list, and that's the key, it got removed from the list in both. Why do you suppose? Why do we suppose that happened? Well, the answer is this. Copy is what's called a shallow copy. And that means that when Y copied X here, we did not co actually copy the list. What we copied was the pointer to the list. So whenever you have a list inside, you know, whenever you have one sequence inside of another sequence, what you really have is a pointer to that sequence in another place in memory. So this dictionary has username, which is a string, which is, and then, which is immutable. And then you have another string, which is immutable and then machines, which is immutable. But then here for this list, which instead of the actual list, what's stored in X is actually a pointer to this list stored somewhere else in memory. When we made a copy of Y, we actually made a complete copy of username and admin. And we made a copy of machines, but when it came to this list, we didn't make a separate copy completely because what we did is we copied over the address of what this of this list that was somewhere else in memory. And that means that both machines and both of the, these dictionaries actually is pointing to the same list in memory. So when we modify the list in one, we also modify it in the other. Does that make sense? And if it doesn't complete for everyone on here, it's okay. It's kind of a tough concept to understand. It helps if you've had C++ one and you've worked with pointers. Um, uh, but conceptually, just realize it would make sense that the that this whole thing was not stored because potentially that list is very long and we don't want to store that whole list every place it is. So instead, they have this pointer to where the actual list is stored in one place in memory. And when you make copies, you're just copying the pointer over everything ends up pointing to the same thing. And it's actually kind of an efficiency thing. So. So when you change, when you have a list and you make a copy, when you have a list inside of another list and you make a copy, the internal list will tend to be pointing to the same thing. There is a, a fix for this. If you say from copy, import deep copy, make a dictionary, and then say C equals D dot copy, and then make a deep copy. So we have D is the original, C is a copy of the original. DC is a deep copy of the original. And then here we're going to append Clive um, to the original dictionary, and we'll see that it also modifies the regular copy, but notice it doesn't modify the deep copy. So the deep copy is actually a full up copy. There's nothing that's shared between the two. It's how it's 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 um, it, it ensures that you get two brand new things. So let me know if that works.
Okay. So I want to go through. This is a bunch of other things. Um, you can go through those if you'd like. I think um, I'm going to let you go on the uh, do those on your own. They're not. Um, uh, they're not. They're. They're not that difficult. Just apply the. Just go through the demos. Um, and let's see. So let's take a, a 10 minute break. We'll come back at 6.30 and continue on. And we'll look at um, the, um, the next assignment, which was, um, which is Fruit Finder. So I'll walk through that when we get back at uh, 30 minutes after, and then uh, we'll continue on. So break till 30 minutes, till 6.30.
Okay, can you all hear me? So, is anyone having any questions, specific questions about this assignment? How many people have started this assignment? Right on. Yeah. All right, cool. Is it making sense? Uh, are there any any roadblocks at this point? All right, I'll go over it a little bit. So again, the the key to this program is you're gonna make a, a list of seven fruits. You're gonna ask the user for this for a sentence. And then once you have that sentence, what you want is we want a list of fruits and then we want the list of the words in the sentence. So um, you know, the key here is um let me get my idle back up. is if I have a sentence which looks like, you know, actually I'll do a little programming thing. If I just do this, I'm just going to get a net sentence and just type it up and send it back out. You know, it just prints it out. This is really just one big long string. I can't really, you know, but what I want to do is I want to have a list. I want to have two lists that I can find the intersection. So what I'm going to, what I want really is the words. And the way you get the words is you do sentence dot split. And you can split on a space, for example. And then I want to print words. If I do it this way, You notice that now what we have is we have a list with separate words that are in the sentence. Does that make sense? So that's one part of this program. The other part is if I have um, list one,
Just looking at that, what's the intersection of list one and list two? The intersection should just be word three, word four, right? These two are in both lists. These are not. So how do I get that? Yeah, word three and word four, right? Both of those are in the intersection of those two lists. So I can use that. If you look in the text, we have this um, intersection. I could say intersect of the two lists is equal to list and I'm going to convert the first list into a set and then I'm going to use the and operator which says I want everything that's in list one and then everything that's in list two so this is saying give me the thing all the things such that they're both in the set of list one and the set of list two and the only things that are both are these are word three and word four. So if I do that and print I get word three and four. I could also put I can use the LEN of intersect. And that can tell me that I've got two common items. Does that make sense? And then the last part of this is, let's say I have um, you know my sentence. Let's say we had some fruit called apple. And we want to replace it with Brussels sprouts. We could say new sentence is equal to sentence dot replace. And you put in the word you're going to look for, which in this case will be the fruit. And then So what happened is, given this fruit, we could use this replace. So you, you know, this is definitely going to be in your program. The question is, how do you find a fruit that is actually in their sentence? Because if I ran this again, and I said blah orange, blah, it wouldn't be able to find it. So I can't just hard code apple. You've got to figure out how to pick one that's in the intersect list and use that instead. Does that make sense? OK, so that's all my hints for this program, I think. Um, unless there's other further questions, I'll stay online until uh, and, and um, if anyone's got any questions. But that completes what uh, I have to go over for today. Thank you very much.